If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, leave a like. The vocal tract is the resonator of the voice. Professor Johann Sundberg. The vocal tract resonances, called formants, are of paramount significance to voice and vowel quality. There is no doubt, however, that the voice sets up forceful vibrations in the structures limiting the voice organ, such as the chest wall, the throat, the face, and the skull. However, these vibrations are much too feeble to compete with the sound radiation from the open mouth. In other words, such vibrations do not contribute acoustically to the formation of vowel sounds. This is not to say that they cannot be used as a sign of a properly used voice organ. You can identify some of the features of the vocal tract. Lips. Tongue. This difficult to control piece of anatomy is called the velum or the soft palate, but you can think of it as the nose gate. It opens and closes, controlling the flow of air and sound up into the nasal cavity. In most people, the velum is opening and closing constantly when we speak and sing, and we're barely even aware of it. Down here, we have the larynx, which houses the vocal fold. Now the area at the back here that joins the nasal and the oral cavity together, this area is called the pharynx. So the nasopharynx is here, behind the nose. The oropharynx is here, behind the mouth. And the laryngopharynx is down here because this structure here is the larynx. Manuel Garcia Jr. The real mouth of the singer ought to be considered the pharynx. Because it is in the pharynx that is found the causation of timbers. The facial mouth is but a door through which the voice passes. Still, if this door were not sufficiently open, sounds could not issue freely. As we sing and speak, air moves from the lungs and vibrates the vocal cords to make sound. With an endoscope camera the view of the pharynx and larynx can be seen. Here, we have the back wall of the vocal tract. We also have the epiglottis. It is a flap of cartilage located in the throat behind the tongue and in front of the larynx. The epiglottis is usually upright at rest, allowing air to pass into the larynx and lungs. It comes over the larynx during the action of swallowing to prevent food and liquid from entering the trachea. The larynx is mounted on top of the trachea or windpipe. These are the vocal folds. They can close off the airway or come together to create vibrations. The space between the vocal folds are called the glottis. The arytenoid cartilages help move the vocal folds. Being attached to the arytenoids, they move along with them, allowing them to tense, relax, or approximate. This is a sample of the vocal process in action. Now give me a singing. At a low pitch and then sing up. Okay, can you go any further? Okay, good. And now high to low. Douglas Stanley. The resonance cavities of the voice, when it is properly produced, are A. The laryngeal pharynx. B. The oral pharynx. C. The nasal pharynx. D. The trachea and bronchi. Komm lieber Mai und mach die Bäume wieder grün und lass mir an dem Bach die kleinen Feuchen blühen. Wie möchte ich doch so gern ein Feuchen wiedersehen? Ach lieber Mai, wie gerne einmal spazieren gehen. William Bennard. First, any resonator is a secondary vibrator. 
Second, the vocal resonator is a column of air. It is not a sounding board of some sort, as comparisons with stringed instruments would make it. Third, the shape of the resonator is not only complex, but highly variable.